of 2 Peter chapter number 3. Enjoy the epistles of Peter because the writer of the epistle of Peter is a different guy than the guy who chops off Malchus's ear. He's a different guy than the guy who denied the Lord three times on that dreadful evening when they came to arrest our Lord. He's a different fella. He's matured in the Lord. He knew the Lord, walked with Him. But this guy is a different guy. He's figured it out. He's learned how to listen to the Lord and lean on the Lord. And his life has been spent now serving the Lord. And in 2 Peter chapter number 3, we begin reading verse number 1. He says, This second epistle, beloved, I now write unto you, in both which I stir up your pure minds by the way of remembrance, that ye may be mindful of the words which were spoken before by the holy prophets, and of the commandment of us, the apostles of our Lord and Savior, knowing this first, that there shall come in the last days scoffers walking after their own lust." and saying, Where is the promise of His coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of the creation. For this they willingly are ignorant of, that by the word of God the heavens were of old, and the earth standing out of the water and in the water, whereby the world that then was being overflowed with water perished. But the heavens and the earth which are now by the same word are kept in store reserved unto fire against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. But, beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years and a thousand years as one day. The Lord is not slack concerning His promise, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering to usward, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. I'm liking this so much, I'm going to read on. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. Here's global warming right here, okay? The earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up. Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, uh, what manner of persons ought ye to be in all holy conversation and godliness, looking for and hasting unto the coming of the day of God, wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat? Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for new heavens and a new earth, wherein dwelleth righteousness, Wherefore, beloved, seeing that ye look for such things, be diligent that ye may be found of him in peace without spot and blameless. Let's pray. Father, we bless you. Thank you for the word of God. Thank you, Lord, that all creation testifies of it and it tells of all creation. Lord, thank you that, Lord, we can put our faith in the promises of God. Lord, we realize that the Bible, the last times, are being fulfilled right before our eyes. Let us embrace your truth. Let us be busy about your business. Lord, help us to work while it's yet day, for the night time cometh when no man can work. God, I pray that we can bring many sons unto glory before it's everlasting too late. Now, Father, I pray that, Lord, we would not only uh, be busy about your business, but we'd keep our eyes on the eastern sky, because, Lord, we know you're coming for your church. And Lord, I pray that, Lord, we'd have that blessed hope within us, that, Lord, uh, we would be pure even as you are pure. And I'll bless now those that are working with our teams on the other side. Bless their efforts. And I pray, pray for those young people, the face so much peer pressure and so much ungodliness and wickedness in this world. I pray you to insulate them, put a hedge about them. I pray for those that are saved, you'd use them greatly to impact their world. Lord, if there be any that aren't saved, I pray they'd get saved before it's everlasting too late. 
these that are here and those that might be watching live stream. God, I pray you'd bless them. I pray that, Lord, you'd refresh them and revive them. I pray you'd give us a zeal for the things of God. Father, use this unworthy vessel now. Help us, and we'll bless you for it, for it's in the holy name of the Lord Jesus. We ask these things. Amen. And amen. I want to draw your attention to a couple things. We'll get to the thought. I want you to notice the looking. Look at verse number 2. That ye may be mindful of the words which were spoken before by the holy prophets and of the commandments uh, of us, the apostles, unto uh, or of the Lord and Savior, knowing this first, that there shall come in the last days scoffers uh, walking after their own lust. Uh, can I say, my dear friends, we need to be looking for the Savior. We need to know uh, that He's coming. In verse 2 it says that you may be mindful. Uh, that word mindful means to be alert, to be attentive, to be awake. Uh, one of the testimonies against God's church today is many people uh, have fallen asleep in the things of God. Uh, we need to be attentive. We need to be alert. We need to be awake. We need to be mindful. We need to be looking uh, for Jesus to come. Uh, we need to be uh, seeking Him uh, and serving Him like never before. So many people uh, have been lulled to sleep because uh, of all the pressure and everything that's going on in this world. Friends, you ought to be excited. Amen. Hmm? Amen. How come an event will happen and we'll mark it on our calendars and look for it for weeks and months to come? But the Lord's coming and it's an afterthought. We see the looking. Notice the last days in verse number 3. Knowing first that this first that there shall come in the last days scoffers. We're living in the last days. People make fun of the Bible. They make fun of Bible preaching churches. They make fun of preachers. Christians have been the, uh, 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 the butt of many a jokes for many a years. Uh, 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 folks think that we uh, uh, aren't raptite if we believe that Bible and if we believe in a, in a deity out there that's in control. Uh, uh, everything works against us in modern philosophy and modern teaching. Uh, uh, they say you can control your own destiny. They say that, uh, 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 that you uh, uh, can be whatever you want to be and all these types of philosophies are being inundated into our children in so much uh, they say you can choose your own gender. You, you can become your own God. Uh, uh, my dear friends, and they look at us and say we've been hearing that Jesus is coming uh, uh, for all of our lives but he hadn't come yet. Uh, where is he coming? Uh, 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 but we are living in the last days. This know also that in the last days uh, perilous times shall come. Uh, friend, those times have come. Uh, we live in a day and age uh, uh, where those that are in charge do not tell people the truth, uh, do not want you to know the truth. Uh, our country has been going towards a, a one world government and a new world order uh, uh, since the first George Bush was in presidency. Uh, uh, Biden came out this week. You probably didn't see it because you don't pay any attention uh, any more attention to him than I do. Uh, but I saw a clip uh, where somebody wrote a speech because he don't even have the faculties to know where he's at. Uh, and he said we are moving toward a new world order. Uh, the powers that be uh, are striving uh, uh, to put this thing together uh, and the Antichrist can step in uh, and there'll be a one world government, a one world religion. Uh, it's headed that way. Uh, friend, we're living in the last days. Uh, I'm thankful when the Antichrist steps on the scene we'll already be off the scene. Uh, what a blessing. But friends, it's coming down to the end. Uh, we're living in the last days. What are you going to do about it? Uh, you ought to plan like we're going to be here forever, but you ought to be ready to go. Amen. We're living in the last days. Are you telling anybody? Yeah. Are you living any different? Amen. We're living in the last days. Notice, if you will, the lustful. Again, it says, in the last days there'll be scoffers walking after their own lust. Can I say, we live in a day and age where... The, People walk after their own lust. Now, I know you don't pay any attention, so I'm going to tell you about it. A 
about three and a half, four years ago, there became a great push in America for America to get woke. They burned down Seattle. They tried to burn down Milwaukee. Chicago has been nothing but a murder fest. New York City is an absolute zoo. And there's been a great push for everyday normal Americans to accept things that go against nature and go against everything that we have ever known in America. Amen. Hmm? Can I say there are things uh, happening in America to deprogram you and make you think like they want you to think. They want you to think that a man loving a man is normal. Right. Now, Brother Ed, I love you, but I don't want to smooch you. And I promise you, above all things human, I definitely don't want to see you without any clothes on. Huh? There's just something, Cam, that is wrong about a hairy-legged fella wanting to rub legs with another hairy-legged fella. That's wrong. It's wrong for a hairy-legged fella to want to rub legs with a hairy-legged woman. That's wrong. All the, all the ladies are checked to make sure they shaved their legs. It wasn't that funny, Lisa. But they want you to think that's normal. They want you to think that it's normal for a woman to be with a woman. And then they want you to think it's normal that a man can have a baby. Good luck with that, fellas. And now they are even giving men hormones and things where men can breastfeed a baby. That's stupid and gross. Uh, but they want you to think that's normal. Watch the commercials. Look at how many commercials where you got the man at home doing the laundry and the woman's away working. Now listen, I am not a sexist. Do not go out here and tell me Doug hates women. I do not hate women. I love women. I'm married to one. I have one as a daughter. I have one as a granddaughter. I love women. But God's the one that set up the divine order. The man's to be the head of the household. Uh, 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 the wife is to be the one who uh, uh, keeps the house. Uh, uh, the man is to provide for his family. Uh, listen, there's nothing wrong with a woman working. Uh, matter of fact, in this day and age, uh, if you're blessed to where the wife doesn't have to work, that is a blessing. Uh, but most uh, households, it takes both of them just to be able to survive in this economy and in this society. Uh, but make no mistakes. Uh, uh, God made the man the head of the household. Uh, hey, if the fella wants to help out with the laundry, that's a blessing. Uh, if he wants to help out with the household chores, that's a blessing. Uh, uh, but they're trying to make it look like the man's supposed to stay at home, uh, raise the children, do all the household stuff, and the woman's to wear the pants of the family. Uh, that goes against God's divine order. Amen. You watch the commercials and see if I'm not telling you the truth. Normally, I DVR everything so I don't have to watch commercials. I get tired of commercials telling me all kinds of stuff I need that I don't need. But you watch the commercials. And you watch the commercials. You look at how many commercials. They're all about people of color. And you don't see white people in commercials much anymore. Now listen, I don't care what color you are. Neither is God. He's no respecter of persons. But the reality of the situation is 85% of Americans are white. Only about 6-8% are, are blacks. And Hispanics are more than blacks now. But why is it that every commercial and just about every new sitcom is always people of color and not white people? They're trying to make you think that we're a nation that is run by people of color more than white people. Now, I don't care what color you are. If we're going to be fair, let's be fair. 
Let's have white people, black people, Hispanic people. Let's have them all. But they're trying to deprogram us. And what they're trying to do is they're trying to elevate Hispanics so that they'll get out and vote because they know who they want them to vote for. There's a, there's a scheme behind what they're doing. It's called wokeness. They're trying to devalue the people who have worked and paid for everything that goes through our government. Hmm? People on welfare do not pay for missiles. People on welfare do not pay for streets. People on welfare do not pay for all kinds of things that we enjoy in America. The middle class pays for everything uh, and they're trying to make it seem like the middle class doesn't count anymore. Now listen, not everybody of color is on welfare. I do not insinuate there's a lot of white people on welfare. But what I'm trying to say is, is they're trying to make it seem like that if you are a person not of color, you are not important and people of color are more important because people of color have been pushed down with their rights for so long, they deserve to be elevated above. I'm against all that. I think every man ought to earn their own way. Right. Hmm. It's what I believe. I don't care what color you are. And I'm thankful there are people of color serving our military. I'm thankful there are people of color that have uh, uh, come out of all kinds of different circumstances of life uh, and they become executives and professionals and all those things I think is wonderful. Where I got a problem is if you don't work, you shouldn't eat. Amen. And I got a problem where people are all the time pushing things on me that I don't necessarily believe. Hmm? Now I know this is real popular. How come every commercial segment you'll find somebody real big in their underwear number one i don't want to see anybody in their underwear and i don't want to see, i don't want to see any of that but how come they and they got a big push on all this stuff what i'm trying to say is they have pushed all this wokeness on americans bud light tried it by putting a transvestite whatever it was on their commercials and about went bankrupt. Disney's been pushing anti-God and wokeness and they about went bankrupt. Disney has. Can I say, uh, American Airlines pushed it and boy, they really suffered. A lot of these companies have pushed it uh, and even Walmart's gotten in on it. Uh, even Cracker Barrel's gotten in on it. Uh, but Americans are saying, no, we're not for all this junk. Uh, we're for uh, the red, white, and blue. We're for the American way. We're for uh, liberty and justice for all. Uh, we're for America. Uh, and what is happening now uh, is a lot of these folks have found out this wokeness isn't working. Yeah. They're still pushing it. Hmm? I travel all over the country. You know what I find? Most Americans just want America to be what America used to be. We want America to be where people work hard, where they can come home and enjoy the fruits of their labor, where they can enjoy being around their neighbors, where we have a government that doesn't tell us what to think and what to believe. We want a government that is for the people and by the people. We want a government that listens to its constituents. Uh, we don't want a government telling us what we have to do and mandating to us what we have to do. And by the way, that sorry no good governor we got has lied in the debate. He's taking credit for things he didn't do, and he's trying to forget about the things he did do. He did shut down churches. Uh, you remember that? But he kept abortion clinics and bars open. You remember that? Huh? He's trying to deny it. You vote for him. Heaven help you. That's all I can say. Uh, you say, well, you're going to vote for Daniel Cameron? Well, I can't tell you who I'm going to vote for, but I'm going to vote for the guy that's running against Andy Bashir. Yeah. And I met him. Claims to be a, a Bible believer. He has always voted the Bible way, and I'm for him. Hmm. Amen. I am. So a preacher, why are you for him? Because he's for what I'm for. Huh? We need to put more people like that in office. And I'm for the new speaker. Told y'all he carried his Bible um, to the house podium with him. 
And he's caught all kinds of flack for it. I'm for anybody that catches flack for carrying a Bible. Amen. I don't know why I got on all that, but I did. They're lustful. They've got these lustful ways. Can I say there's been a big push to tear away all kinds of boundaries? What happens in New York City doesn't matter to us. We're from Kentucky or Virginia or Indiana or heaven help you from Louisville, huh? West Virginia, I'm sorry. I'm sorry there, Miss Billy. <laughs> New York City's a cesspool right now. And by the way, all these sanctuary cities, they've been uh, shipping all these illegal immigrants to all these sanctuary cities, and now they're crying, foul play, foul play, foul play. We don't want all these people. Well, you wanted them, you got them. There you go. You know, there was a police officer on, in, in Florence that put out some kind of post where the Florence Police Department will never do anything against the homeless, so all, all homeless are welcome here, and they've been busting them in from everywhere. That's why we've been seeing so many homeless people. Hmm? Florence don't look like what Florence used to look like. Hmm? Our country's being turned upside down right before us. Can I say, we don't need new immigration laws. We've got great immigration laws. We just need to enforce them. Mm -mm. Oh, man, I'm in this. I don't even know how I got here. Used to, if you came from Germany, you had to come and learn the language. Amen. You had to come legally. If you came from Ireland, you had to come and learn the language and come legally. If you came from Spain, you had to come, learn the language, learn and become legal and do everything legally. That's the way that it's always been. Listen, uh, uh, everyone that I know of in here except Miss Veronica, all of our roots, we're all mutts. We all come from somewhere other than here. Well, our forefathers had to come legally. Why now do we just let anybody come? And they don't tell you who's coming. There's a lot of people coming here that are not for America. And a lot of these demonstrations you're seeing, there are politicians who are paying for these folks to demonstrate. Don't these people have jobs? They just go around the country demonstrating. Where'd that come from? Huh? I'll tell you where it come from. All that overtime you work, you're paying for it. With all them taxes you pay. Hmm? I'm sad, but that's what's happening. But folks used to have come legally, Brother Jim. Where is halavity from? Who starts out their name with, with consonants instead of having a vowel in there somewhere? Huh? Halavity. Bulimia. Bohemian. Bohemian Rhapsody, right there. And Miss Fedora, I forget where you're from. Who is it? Italy. Miss Fedora's from Italy. Brother Jack, he don't even know where he's from. He's just been here as long as dirt's been here. Huh? Huh? But they had to come legally. Can I say something? Nas and Aaron are here legally. Huh? They didn't come across the border. They came legally. Huh? So why, why is there a change and a shift? Because they're trying to transform America. Hmm? Huh? And the problem is, Miss Jackie, is folks that are aged that are back there in that classroom, they don't know how to fight for America. They've never known what America was. They weren't here September 11th. They don't know about World War II, the greatest generation. Because that crowd, they don't read. They Google. And Google don't always tell you the truth. And Wikipedia doesn't always tell you the truth. They don't understand what them monuments stand for. They don't have any problem with statues being torn down and, and things because they've been told that the ideology behind that statue is wicked. Uh, they have no idea what blood was shed. They have no idea what people stood for. They have no idea what families uh, had to endure. In order for us to have the liberties and the freedoms that we have, uh, they have a right to their opinion, but their opinion doesn't matter any more than anybody else's opinion. These young people don't know how to fight for that. And the powers that be know it. They just tell them what they want them to know. 
sad. But that's where we are. And that's nowhere in my notes. But the lustful, they walk after their lust. Uh, not only that, they're lustful in their wagery. Look at verse 4. And saying, Where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of the creation. Their wagering means they make light, they downplay, they undervalue what we stand for. Uh, they're lustful and they're willing in, uh, in being willing ignorant. Uh, look at verse 5. For, they, for this they willingly are ignorant of that, that by the word of God the heavens were of old and the earth standing out of the water and in the water whereby the world was in uh, overflowed with water. They have all the evidence to show there was a worldwide flood. They have all the evidence of creation. They have the Word of God. They have all those things. They just choose to be willingly ignorant of it. I don't care what the Bible says. I believe this. It amazes me how many people that used to sit in fundamental Bible churches, but they choose to reject the teaching and preaching of the Bible because they choose to believe something else. They're willingly ignorant of those things because they're lustful they're lustful because here's their ideology it's the essence of sin my right to my claim to myself I'm allowed to love who I want to love live who, however I want to live and you can't have any opinion about that but when we say that we want to believe the Bible they've got a big opinion about that uh, well that was for Brother Bob Drake. Uh, they're not only lustful. Thank God for the long suffering of God. Amen. Verse number eight, it says, "The Lord is not." Uh, verse eight, but beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing: that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years, and a thousand years is one day. Now, let me just stop right there. Let me make this very clear. That is not saying in God's timetable that he takes a thousand years in between each day he does something. That's just saying God's long-suffering, he's not on a timetable. And he'll wait a thousand years. That's just as one day with him. And one day is a thousand years. It's not making a doctrinal statement that in between every day of creation was a thousand years. Hmm? Don't you think God knows the difference between a thousand years and a day? Amen. Don't you think God would know that we would know the difference between a thousand years and a day? Don't you think if it took 6,000 years to create everything God created, don't you think he would say, and the first thousand years, this happened. And the second thousand years, this happened. No, it, it happened all in a day. Huh? So just matter of fact, it happened in an instant in a day. God said it and it happened. Yes. Hmm? Huh? Amen. So just make sure you understand that because there's folks that teach that there's a thousand years gap in between each day of creation. Uh, and then there's idiots that teach, teach that we've been here billions of years. Uh, and if we've been here billions of years and we've evolved and this is the best that we can get, we're in trouble. Uh, uh, but verse 9 says, The Lord's not slack concerning His promise, as some men count slackness, but His long-suffering to usward not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Part of the redneck in me says, God, once you come back, put an end to all this mess. But then that still small voice within me says, but there's still people that God wants to save. Amen. Amen. Why does God put up with all the junk going on? Because there's still sinners that need to be saved. Right. You and I can't can be concerned with all the junk going on. We still need to tell sinners. Amen about Jesus. We still need to be a light. It don't matter what uh, uh, this world does. doesn't matter that it's spinning out of course. doesn't matter all that's going on. Uh, what matters is God still wants to save sinners. But I'm not going to preach on any of that. I'm interested in verse number 1. He says, The second epistle, beloved, I now write unto you, and both which I stir up your pure minds by the way of remembrance. I just want to preach for a minute on stirring our memory. Now, I don't know, maybe you've been on prejudice, prejud whatever that medicine is from jellyfish makes your mind work better than mine. But I don't remember like I used to. 
And some of the memories are a little cloudy. There are some things that are still pretty vivid, but there are some things I just don't remember like I used to. And Peter is inspired to write this epistle to let people know even in his day things were going crazy, but he said, I write this to stir up your pure minds of remembrance. And sometimes our memory needs to be stirred. Sometimes if we're not careful, we get to look around uh, and we get to thinking, man, what is happening? Uh, and we forget why we're here. Uh, and we need to every now and then be stirred up uh, and have our memory stirred. Uh, aren't you glad for preaching? Preaching will stir us up. Uh, and even preaching will stir our memory uh, and make us think in the right way and think about uh, the way that things have happened in order that we might uh, uh, remember what we're supposed to be doing for God and for His glory. Uh, can I say this? Uh, uh, we need to remember uh, uh, what we were in the foolishness of our sin. Uh, do you remember what you used to be in the foolishness of your sin? Uh, remember what you were before you got saved? Uh, remember you too didn't look like you belonged on a church pew? Uh, remember you too did things you aren't proud of? Uh, remember you too uh, uh, people would look at you and thought you was a scoundrel? Uh, uh, but look at you now. Uh, look what God's done in your life. Uh, hey, look around, see some scoundrel out there and think that was me. Uh, but by the grace of God, look what I am now. Uh, and God can do the same for them that he's done for me. Uh, yeah, you remember when our grandmas thought Elvis was the most wicked thing that ever happened? Yeah. Now look at some of the junk going on. Huh? What I'm trying to say is at one time, somebody thought you was kind of weird. Somebody thought you was a scoundrel. Somebody thought there was no hope for you. Somebody dis looked at you in disdain. Uh, but aren't you glad what God did? We need to be stirred up to what we were in the foolishness of our sins. Uh, we need to remember what it was uh, before the grace of God became real in our life. Uh, hey, every one of us would admit uh, we don't deserve the grace of God. We ought to already be in hell, but we're not going to hell because the grace of God did appear unto us uh, and the preaching of the gospel uh, revealed unto us our need of a Savior. We got saved and God saved us. Uh, he changed us. Uh, we no longer resemble what we used to resemble. We no longer take part in what we used to take part in. Uh, all because of the goodness of God. Uh, and we need to be stirred up to that every now and then. Uh, uh, listen, we need to be stirred up. Our memory stirred to where He found us. Mm. You didn't just choose to get saved. God came looking for you. And some of us need to remember the gutter God found us in. Uh, uh, listen, I'm thinking right now, I can't call names, somebody might be watching. But I'm thinking right now of a woman that was the most judgmental, backbiting person I've ever known to go to a Baptist church. This woman, all she did was rail on everybody. All she did was find fault on everybody. She'd find fault on you because you don't have a necktie on. She'd find fault on uh, uh, Brother Clint because he don't have a jacket on. She'd find fault with some of you because you're parting your hair the wrong way. She'd find fault because some of you got beard. He, and she, every sinner was the most wicked person in the world. And she just found fault, found fault, found fault. And I heard that and heard that and heard that all of my young years, going up into teenage years. That's all I heard out of this woman. I'm thinking, Lord have mercy. That must be the holiest woman that has ever walked the face of the earth because she finds fault in everybody I'm serious find fault in everybody but really railed on sinners and then the Paul Harvey effect I found out the rest of the story you know what I found out about that woman she didn't come from the other side of the tracks she come from the gutter of the other side of the tracks this woman came from the lowest form of depravity 
that you can ever think of. Uh, she came from the most vile of situations. Uh, she came from the wickedness of wickedness. Uh, but here, uh, somewhere along the line, she trusted in Christ, and years later, all she does is find fault in everybody else because she forgot where God found her. Uh, uh, friends, we need to remember where God found us because uh, if we do, we'll have compassion on people. Uh, we'll realize we don't deserve God's grace. Uh, we'll realize how good God is. Uh, and if God can save the chief of sinners and make him the great apostle Paul, uh, God can save anybody. Uh, and our memory needs to be stirred up to where God found us. Hallelujah. Huh? Can I say this? We need our memory stirred about when we receive forgiveness. Remember the night you got saved? I never got over that night. Now the next day, can I tell you, the sky looked the same way it always been. But in my eyes, it looked bluer. The grass looked greener. The birds sound sweeter. Something was different. Uh, I'll never forget that night uh, when I got up from that old-fashioned altar and my white-haired granddaddy said, Son, uh, are you satisfied? Uh, can I say some 49 years later, uh, I'm still satisfied in what God did that night? Uh, hey, we need to remember uh, what it felt like when God forgave us uh, and we became clean and made whole by the blood of the Lord Jesus. Uh, need to remember that. Huh? As you remember that, you'll... Realize his blood can still do that for other people. Yeah, our memory stirred from what it felt like to be changed. Listen, I wasn't saved by my feelings. Neither were you if you were saved. There's a whole denomination out there that bases everything on how they feel. I base everything on the truth and the promises of the Word of God. I'm saved because I believed on the Lord Jesus Christ and He told me if I did, He'd save me. Are you listening? Uh, I wasn't saved by my feelings, but I'm glad after I got saved, uh, there was some feelings come al uh, associated with it, come along with it. Uh, every now and then, I'll be sitting in a service uh, and I get them God bumps moving all over me. Uh, I get the good case and I can't help it. Uh, I got to let a well glory out. Uh, I got to uh, uh, just uh, respond in a way because something inside gets to stirring. Uh, hey, I wasn't saved by my feelings, but it sure does feel good being saved. Hallelujah. Huh? Right. Uh, Amen. We need to be stirred, our memory stirred, to what a friend we have in Jesus. Uh, listen, you live long enough, you get saved long enough, you're going to have somebody turn on you. Might be a relative. Might be a friend. Might be a good church friend. Somebody going to turn on you. And can I say, most of the time, Brother Bob, without a cause, they're just going to turn on you. And I'd like to put on a red cape right now with a big yellow S on it and say, oh, that don't bother you. But it does. It affects you. It affects your thinking. It makes you think, what's the use? But I tell you one that'll never turn on you. He's a friend that sticketh closer than a brother. Paul said, all men forsook me, nevertheless the Lord stood by me. We've got to remember what a friend we have in Jesus. He'll never turn away from you. Matter of fact, he's always there with his arms open wide and saying, come on, friend, let me just love on you for a little bit. huh?" We need to remember that. Huh? Because a lot of times we claim we walk by faith and not by sight, but most of the time we're walking by sight and not by faith. But every now and then we've got to be reminded we just need to look through the eyes of faith unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, and find he's a friend that sticketh closer than a brother. We need to remember that. Sometimes our memory needs to be stirred to the fact that the Father is still on the throne. I get to looking around, and I think, where's God? I look at churches. I think, where is God? I look at people. Where is God? And then I got to remember verse number eight. But beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing that one day is with the Lord a thousand years, and a thousand years is one day. God's where He's always been. He's on the throne, and He's working. A lot of times He's working in the shadows, and you can't see it. If you're saved here tonight, Somewhere along the line, the Holy Ghost got to working in the shadows of your life and made you miserable about being lost. 
then all of a sudden you couldn't take it anymore and you got born again but the Holy Spirit can go where we can't go the preacher probably wasn't standing in front of you but that Holy Spirit went with you everywhere you went some of you got to where you couldn't even go to sleep at night huh because the Lord was working can I say we may not outwardly see much happening but God's a working because he's still on his throne we need to be stirred of that huh Listen, as long as the church is here, God's still doing the work. Amen. Hmm? Hmm? By the way, the church ain't going down. She's going up. Uh, and can I say this? We need to be reminded that the fors- about the forsaken without hope. Again, in verse number 9, The Lord's not slack concerning His promises, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering to us, we're not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. God wants to save everybody. Jesus died for everybody. The Bible still says, whosoever will may come. And can I say, we need to be reminded that there are lost people out there without hope, and we might be the only thing standing between them and hell. I'm going to help you with something right now. Lost people aren't going to run to Walmart, buy a Bible, and read about how to be saved. And if they did, Walmart's about the only place here in Florence they can fi- actually find a King James Bible, but they wouldn't know the difference between buying that one and another one. Hmm. The only hope is that somebody like you, you or me can let them know about Jesus and how he changed our life. Give them a gospel track that tells them how to be saved. And God start using that to work in their heart and in their life. Huh? Can I say a lot of people aren't going to drive by our church anymore because they changed the road. Huh? And if they're coming from 42, they're past it before they know it's here. So you and I got to go outside these walls and let people know in our communities that Jesus loves them, that Jesus will save them. We need to be stirred of the fact that there's people out there without hope. Hmm? Are we going to let Joe Olstein bring them to God? All he wants is what's in their pocketbook. Huh? That's our job. He said, After you receive the Holy Ghost, you shall be witness unto me in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and the uttermost parts of the world. We need our memory stirred. There's folks that are forsaken and without hope. Here's why we need to be stirred. I'll be done. We need to be stirred because we tend to get settled. Brother Ron said in his testimony, we ought to be excited. Hmm? It's a crying shame that a so-called pop star that I would walk across the street to puke on her commands $17,000 for a ticket and people pay it. But the doors of the church are wide open. And folks won't come, but those that do come, come and sit down and they get settled in their pew. Here's how you know you're settled. You sit in the same spot all the time. Only but Phil, I never know where he's going to sit. That's because nobody likes him. He just keeps bouncing around until somebody will say, Hey, I'll give, you a, I'll give you a chicken leg if you sit here. I remember one time I told you all we need to confuse the devil, come to church and sit somewhere different. Everybody did, and then I couldn't find nobody. I kept saying, Where is everybody? You know? You're supposed to be here, but you're not. You're over there. You confused me. I don't know if you confused the devil, but you confused me. No, we tend to just relax. We tend to be satisfied in being saved and we forget that was just the first step. Now we're to serve and let others know that they can be saved too. We need stirred because we tend to get settled. We need stirred because some are subject to go to sleep. You say, preacher, people really go to sleep on your preaching? Oh, they may be here, but they might not be listening. But the truth of the matter is, they go to sleep because they don't do anything with it. Why do you think the great apostle Paul wrote, it's now high time that we awake out of our sleep because our salvation is nearer than when we believed? Because people went to sleep. 
which sleep on God. They aren't doing what they're supposed to do. And that's why we need stirred. We need stirred because we may be in shock. Sometimes we get so caught up in current events we forget what we're really supposed to be doing. Can I help you with something? The world's always been crazy. There's nothing new under the sun. Now, they always didn't have missiles, and they always didn't have warfare like what we have warfare today, but there's always been something crazy going on in this world. We shouldn't be shocked by the world. The world but ought to be shocked by how much God we got. Sometimes we get in shock. We get to looking around, and things catch us off guard, but they never catch God off guard. So we need to be stirred, reminded the Lord's in control. And sometimes we need stirred because of our schedule. We get so busy and so preoccupied with life, we forget that we have eternal life. And then lastly, sometimes we need stirred because sinners are headed to hell. You was too one day. Aren't you glad somebody prayed for you? Aren't you glad somebody told you about the Lord? Aren't you glad somebody didn't give up on you? What well, can I say? When Paul said he was a debtor to the gospel, because somebody invested in him so he could be saved, he knew he needed to invest in others to be saved. And because you're sitting here saved by the good grace of God, you are obligated to invest in somebody else. If not, people are going to die and go to hell. God help us to be stirred out of our complacency that we might truly become Christians. They were first called Christians because their lives were Christ-like. They were hearing and seeing in those people the same thing they heard out of Jesus. God helped them to hear something different than they're hearing at Crossroads. God helped them to hear something different than they're hearing at the Vineyard. God helped them to hear something different than they're hearing from the Campbellite Church and the Mormons and the Johos and everybody else. God helped them to hear Jesus saves. Jesus saves and then see a light rejoicing that Jesus is saved I know I got on a lot of junk earlier don't know why I got on all that but I did but we do need to be stirred let me ask you something are you satisfied or are you serving God help us to serve the Lord with all our mind all our body all our might because he's coming you can either limp into heaven or you can go out in a blaze of glory. I'd like to go out in a blaze of glory. How about you? Let's all stand. Brother Ray, come get a song. I tell you what, Brother Daniel's in the back, I think. Brother Clint, why don't you come get your guitar and pick, some, pick an invitation song. Just pick something out on the guitar. God spoke to your heart. Why don't you come and ask him to stir you? Maybe God's put somebody on your heart that's lost. Why don't you come pray for them? Why don't you ask God to help you to be more of a light than what you've been? Why don't you just ask God to have his way in your life? Some are coming. He's getting his guitar. Let's pray. Father, we bless you. Lord, this old world is crazy. But, Lord, we're still here to do work. So God, help us to be a light. A lighthouse set up on a hill cannot be hidden. God, help us to be the salt. Salt. If it's lost its savers, henceforth good for nothing, be, be trodden under the foot of men. God, help us to represent you as ambassadors, to let people know how great you really are. God, help us to give glory, not only with our lips, but with our lives, to you and your holy name. God, stir our remembrance over the goodness of God. Bless now. This invitation to speak to hearts, stir our hearts for righteousness. God will thank you for what you do, for it's in the holy name of the Lord Jesus we ask it all. Amen. Do you struggle to find good Bible-based resources to supplement your personal devotions? If so, head on over to ibcflorence.com today and click on Bookstore, where we have a ton of resources. And as always, thanks for listening.